Hi, it's Mrs. Pavelka. I've made this video so that you can follow along step by step as you make your origami crane. Feel free to follow this video in conjunction with the written instructions that I sent to you earlier and you can stop it at any time to catch up since some of the folds are repetitive or you can rewind it as you need to but I think you'll find that between the written handout and the video, you should have no problem creating an origami crane. Okay, we're starting with a square piece of paper, and I trimmed an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of copy paper to an 8.5 by 8.5 inch square. You're going to want to start with folding the paper in half, and your first fold and all your folds, it's very important to align your corners as precisely as you can before you crease. So I'm creasing in the middle while I hold my alignment and then crease. Now we talked about using a bone folder. If you don't have one, you can use a spoon. The second fold is folding the piece of paper that we folded in half in half again. And again, just make sure that you register the corners before you do your creasing. It's okay if it's off just a little bit, but you're going to have a better result if you have good alignment. Now we're going to unfold the paper, and you have a center line that you can see here. We're going to take one up top of a co corner where it's along the folded line, and we're going to fold it down so it meets the center line, so it's parallel. But pay close attention when you start. This is where I look first when I create my alignment. Okay, so you notice this edge is parallel with this edge. You're going to flip it over and do the same thing along the folded edge. Take that corner and align it parallel with the bottom edge making sure that you get a nice sharp corner before you complete your fold and enhance the creasing with pressure from a spoon or bone folder. So now that I've opened it up you can see that we've got two flaps going in the opposite direction. When you open this up you're going to see two diagonal lines that cross through the middle and you're going to notice that two of those lines are raised up towards you where the opposite diagonal line is folded inward. Pay attention to these raised lines. These are folding in towards one another and you can just pull it down to the corner and fold the top of the paper down and just give it a gentle crease with your fingers and you have a diamond it's technically a square, but if we turn it this way, it's on the diamond orientation. Now you can see that you've got a nice crease line, center line crease. The next step, we're doing the same fold two times on each side. So start with the outer corner of your diamond, and you're going to put it in and fold it against that center fold. This part gets a little tricky. You sometimes have to give it a little curl with your finger because, again, we want that to be a nice sharp point, align against the center fold, and crease. And crease with your spoon and repeat. So we're going to take this one. I usually line up against the center fold with this edge, but before I make my crease, I kind of curl this so that it will crease nicely into a sharp point and we're creasing. So you can either pause it and flip it over and do the next two steps or you can follow along. Just flipping it over and repeating. Going for the center fold but adjusting our bottom corner before we crease. One last time. and crease. Okay. 
Now we're going to take our piece, now that we've got it shaped like a kite, and we're going to open this up, and there's an invisible line here that goes from the top edges of these creases. I'm going to go ahead and mark it so it's a little bit easier for you to see. You don't need to mark it. This is just for to make it visually easier to see where your next fold is. So this top corner is going to be folded down right to the points where these wings, think of these as wings, go. And you're going to fold and you're going to crease. Paper's getting very thick now, so creasing is very important. You're gonna flip it over and repeat folding it in the opposite direction. It should be a little easier the second time, even though the fold is going in the opposite direction. Now we're going to unfold our wings on one side and you're going to separate the top layer of paper and pull it up. And you have to open it all the way so it goes down to that little bottom. So you've got kind of a square cone, if you will, or a, a very elongated pyramid. So those crease lines along here might need a little help. So think of this as like a boat. We're gonna close the boat. We're going to take that and follow those crease lines and see how it's not quite folding in there. You have to give it a little help and follow the crease lines all the way up to the tip. We're going to fold those crease lines inward. I closed half the boat. And you're going to fold that one in. And sometimes you have to give those lines, like I said, a little help and fold that one in. Okay? So it's like closing the boat. Make sure that if they don't meet in the middle, that one folds over the other. So we're going to the opposite side and repeating that. We're going to open these folds, lift the top layer of paper only. If you can find it. <laughs> and then we're going to open this up. So you see how you've got this shape that we talked about. It's almost like a boat. Same thing. We want to take these outer flaps and follow the crease lines. Give them a little extra creasing with your finger and fold it in. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. And then this will get folded down into a kite shape again. And you'll notice that this time, the kite has no wings or folds. It's just solid on both sides. We see our, our crease lines, but it's solid on both sides. So what you should see at this point, if you open it up, are the two solid outer kite shapes and like two little legs or wings on the inside. So holding it now, this direction, I'm going to grab one of those wings and I'm gonna pull it out at an angle. And you see how it's starting to fold there? You can decide how sharp of an angle, but I'm just gonna pull those little edges down so I can crease it. And you're gonna do the same thing with the other little wing over here. Fold it out. When it starts to curl and you like the angle, fold it down. Now, these angles don't have to match. You can tell this one's folded down a little bit farther than this one, and that's okay. You're going to pick one of these to be the head. So, I'm going to take this piece, and I'm going to pull down. You've got an interior crease here. I'm going to pull it down, not all the way so that it goes inside, and I'm going to fold that crease in. I'm just pulling it out a little as I fold the crease in. And I'm going to crease this Oops, get it like that. And there you have the head of your crane. I think I'm going to adjust it so his beak is pointing up a little bit more. There we go. And then you've got the tail. Now in order to make this a flying crane, I like to fold the wings out so that they are parallel or close to parallel to the line of the neck. It's a little bit off and that's okay. 
and we're going to flip it over and match that fold. So bringing these two corners together at the bottom and creasing. Now for Lucky, and we grab the crane by where the breastbone might be on a bird, and we pull, we should have two wings that flap. Let's see. Whoops, wants to flap all the way. So I find that every bird that I do flaps a little bit differently. There we go. And there you have your flying crane. I can't wait to see the cranes that you make for next week.